Let's talk about Adobe. <laughs> I thought I'd just jump on this bandwagon. <laughs> actually, I was actually pricing up how much it's going to cost to join Adobe, uh, the subscription models, because they don't do any uh, buy it outright, keep it for the rest of your life uh, software packages anymore. So I was looking at it and I was a bit alarmed about what they're asking you to do and giving your selling your rights, well, give, giving your rights away in per perpetuity to your stuff, whatever you're doing. I uh, have a, a got an old copy uh, of Photoshop version Cyber Studios 3, along with Greg Benz, uh, what I call it, freebie luminosity masks. I find that's all I really need to use, you see, that's it. I mean, I've got no regenerative fill, which is, but then again, does it make you lazy? You can do it yourself with a lot of effort and stuff. And sometimes you just have to fudge it. Um, but most of my pictures are sort of like truish to life and I'm just exaggerating what's already there. So at the moment I'm using a combination of um, Canon Digital Photo Professional, which is good on certain images. I don't, don't tell, you know, certain ones are okay. It's really good and transfer them to Photoshop and then mess around them with luminosity masks. And then I have got a dark table, I use that, but I find it a bit clunky, but it has got some good tools in. I mean, I do sort of process uh, anything that's sort of architectural in sort of nature or needs the perspective corrected. Uh, I sort of do it post-processing, I'll do the whole file and then just do it on the, um, the final TIFF export as a TIFF and Photoshop and then just strain it up and that seems to work well. Uh, I use uh, Luminar AI, I mean I may upgrade to Neo sometime but I don't know. Um, but Luminar, Neo, uh, Luminar AI is quite good uh, because I find it it's really good for doing thumbnails if you want to do something like really outlandish and sort of cinematic poster at a click of a button you just click on a, a LUT, a lookup table and it alters the coloration and you can alter things you know it has a um, sort of pers perspective control sort of stuff in it but it's not really as good as uh, Lightroom or Darktable uh, to do that but everything's uh, a sort of like a balance but also and it only cost me 35 quid so I got it cheap, so that's for the rest of your life, as long as the computer uh, stands up. Also, I was looking at, um, when I was looking to upgrade to the full uh, Cyber Studio package or whatever it is, or using Adobe subscription products. Uh, but I thought, if I'm ever chasing, I mean, my computer's got quite a lot of better RAM in it, but it's got a low processor speed because it's quite old. But you're forever chasing upgrading your, your gear just so it can run the latest software and at some point it just forces you into spending more and more and more on new computers i mean so many people have given me equipment because they've upgraded out of being able to use things in the past like software or even um even things like printers because they're just not supported so you know because they're old things but they still work so and I'm a, as you see by my camera, oh yeah, <laughs> the Canon 5D Mark II, I'll use it till it breaks. <laughs> It'll probably break in any second now. And it's good enough for most things. Oh, I forgot to mention the, um, I use iMove at the moment and with a bit of jiggery pokery, you can sort of, it's all you, all you need for 4K video. I mean, the sound's not all that good, but as long as you're sort of like careful, well, I'm not really all that careful with the sound, as you probably know by my videos, but I've started being a bit more care careful by plugging this directly into the uh, the camera and uh, recording it. And I may be using, I'll have, have to look at some other sound processing software um, like Audacity for clearing up the background noise. It's mainly sort of next to a river and there's wind noise and things like that. You've got to... Uh, trying to remove from the audio and also yeah 
iMovie is good. Um, I have got a copy. I tried uh, DaVinci Resolve, but it does make my computer overheat. It just needs either a bit more RAM and a bigger processor. But that's how it goes. But I may still use that in the future for certain clips. I also use um, to organise my photographs. I'm still using Apple Aperture, which is an upgraded version of um, iPhoto that uh, is no longer available. Basically because I've invested so much time and effort into the keywords and setting it all up that uh, it is no longer viable for me to uh, have another, what I call it, uh, photo library system. So also I like it because it's completely customi customizable, you see, so you can put your own fields in, you can enter IPTC fields, you know, so you can do a lot of things. You can export um, simple HTML pages from it, you know, so it's all pretty good for that. And you can sort of customize them and stuff, you know. It's not quite good on uh, making them look really good and sharpen them sharpen them properly when the web the webs the web page is on screen but it does um i think i can probably get around that with a bit of jiggery pokery oh i also forgot i use um thanks to alex nail i use his free sharpening tools in photoshop <laughs> thank you alex <laughs> they're very very good Anyhow, that's what I've got to say on this situation. So I'm not spending any more money yet. <laughs> I'm just mean. <laughs> I've put some information in the description below for you to use.